Hello, Santa Monica. I'm Susan Klein, the Assistant City Manager, and we're celebrating Women's History Month. The City of Santa Monica is celebrating by highlighting the U.S. Mint's American Women Quarters Program through informational displays at City Hall. Women's History Month developed from the first celebrations of International Women's Day, which advocated for women's rights and equality. The American Women Quarters Program is a four-year program celebrating women who contributed to the development and history of our country by featuring them on limited quantities of U.S. quarters. This year, one of the first women to be honored is Sally Ride. Sally Ride was a dynamic and ambitious woman. A California native, she was one of only six women in the NASA astronaut class of 1978. The first astronaut class to admit women and later become the very first American woman in space. Ride was an accomplished scholar and athlete. She was a nationally ranked tennis player and earned multiple degrees from Stanford University, including a PhD in physics. Sally Ride became a role model to young women across the globe who dreamed of pursuing the sciences. Ride took her position of influence earnestly and with honor. When she wasn't working in her career with NASA, on missions to space in 1983 and 84 and investigating the Columbia and Challenger explosions, she wrote and co-wrote seven children's books, encouraging the study of science and math. She pioneered NASA's Earth Cam, the project giving middle school students the opportunity to take photos of Earth from cameras on the International Space Station. After a fulfilling life of accomplishment, Ride passed away in 2012. Santa Monica was honored to be chosen as our final resting place at our Woodlawn Cemetery, where I am here today. And she's interred next to her father, a professor at Santa Monica Community College, where he was also laid to rest. Ride broke through the barriers and stereotypes that had long dominated her field to pave the way for women to follow. Her legacy is not only cemented by her place in the NASA Hall of Fame, but also by the generations of young girls and women influenced and encouraged by her tenacity and accomplishments. Please join the City of Santa Monica in celebrating Sally Ride along with the four other women being honored during Women's History Month. Adelina Isabel Emilia Luna Otero was born what is now known as New Mexico to a wealthy and politically powerful family. Both her parents were descendants from early Spanish colonists. She was the eldest of 12, including her two brothers and nine half siblings. Brought up in the Santa Fe Lee, she married Rawson D. Warren. After two years of an unhappy marriage, she divorced and since divorce was frowned upon then, she described herself as a widow but kept the surname Otero Warren. She became active in New Mexico politics and worked towards women's suffrage. She moved to New York. While there, she attended Columbia University and volunteered at a settlement house in the city. In 1914, after her mother died, she moved back to Santa Fe. Through her suffrage work, she was tapped to head the New, Mex New Mexico chapter of the Congressional Union. Nina insisted that all suffrage literature be published in both English and Spanish in order to reach the widest audience. In 1918, she took the job as superintendent of public schools in Santa Fe County. She argued that Spanish and English both be allowed in school. In 1921, fresh off the success of the 19th Amendment, she ran for the Republican Party, U.S. House of Representatives, but lost the election by 9%. She remained politically and socially active, and in 1923, she was appointed Santa Fe County Inspector of Indian Schools. She was angered and she criticized the federal government's Indian school system and the horrible conditions that she observed. She never remarried or had children of her own. Her partner, Mammy Meadows, and her homesteaded, established a ranch called Las Dos, and also established a real estate and insurance company with the same name. Otero Warren, an accomplished writer, writing My People for the issue of Survey Graphic in 1931 and a book titled Old Spain in the Southwest in 1936. Otero Warren died on January 3, 1965, leaving behind a legacy of fighting for a better life for those within her community and for their suffrage rights. 
Hello, Santa Monica. I'm Yvonne Young, the Administrator for the Resource Recovery and Recycling Division. One of the honorees that will be featured on this year's quarters is Anna May Wong. Born in Los Angeles in 1905, Anna May Wong is a pioneer in the field of acting because she is regarded as the first Chinese-American Hollywood movie star in the 1920s. Anna fell in love with motion pictures at a young age, worked hard to build her acting experience, but faced struggles to obtain recognition from Hollywood. Despite facing racism and prejudice throughout her career, Anna May Wong was an advocate for Asian Americans, particularly Chinese Americans. Through her persistence, she built a legacy that brought recognition to Chinese American actors with roles in silent film, sound film, television, radio, and theater. Ultimately, Anna May Wong appeared in more than 60 movies throughout her career. She was considered the first Chinese American actress to gain international success. During her extraordinary life, Anna May Wong also built ties to our beloved city of Santa Monica. She bought a home on San Vicente Boulevard and converted it into four apartments, which she also managed. Anna's beautiful life was cut short when she passed away from a heart attack at the age of 56 in her home in Santa Monica. She was cremated and interred at Rosedale Cemetery in Los Angeles. Anna May Wong was a true trailblazer for Asian Americans in Hollywood and for Asian American women across the world. Thank you for allowing me to share Anna May Wong's story. I invite you to join the city of Santa Monica in celebrating Women's History Month by honoring all the amazing women in your life. Thank you. Wilma Mankiller was born to Charlie Mankiller and Clara Sitton. Her father was Cherokee and her mother was Dutch and Irish. One of the things my parents taught me and I'll always be grateful for is to not ever let anybody else define me, but for me to define myself. 1969 American Indian Movement protest at Alcatraz and Mankiller's volunteer work among American Indians in California during the 70s sparked her activism. Mankiller met her first husband, Hector Hugo Olaya de Bardi, an Ecuadorian in California, and they married in 1963 in Reno, Nevada, and they had two daughters, Felicia and Gina. Two years after her divorce in 1974, Mankiller and her daughters moved to Oakland, where she worked on legislation that prevented children from being removed from their culture. Law eventually passed to make it illegal to place Native children with non-Native families. In 1987, Mankiller became the first woman elected as Chief of Cherokee Nation. In 1990, she worked for the nation to self-govern themselves and assume responsibility for federal funds. One of her first focus issues was on the full blood, mixed blood divide. Cherokees with non-native ancestry had assimilated into American culture, while full bloods maintained Cherokee language and their culture. The two groups historically have been at odds and with much disagreement on development. Mankiller had expanded the Cherokee Heritage Center and the Institute for Cherokee Literacy. She persuaded the tribal council to change the way the council members were elected. So rather than at-large candidates, potential members came from newly created districts. The change meant that the urban areas with the large populations no longer controlled the council membership. Mankiller also established the Office of Tribal Justice within the U.S. Department of Justice, and she founded the Women Empowering Women for Indian Nations. Despite her health issues, she continued to write, speak, and teach American Indian culture. In her autobiography, Man Killer, A Chief and Her People, she stated, if I am to be remembered, I want it to be because I am fortunate enough to have become my tribe's first female chief but I also want to be remembered for emphasizing the fact that we have indigenous solutions to our problems. Hi, I'm Brandi Lockhart, Administrative Staff Assistant in the Fire Department and an Equity Inclusion Officer. March is Women's History Month and the City of Santa Monica is celebrating Maya Angelou. Born in St. Louis, Missouri, Maya Angelou was a celebrated writer, actress, performer, and social activist she rose to international prominence as an author after the publication of her groundbreaking autobiography, I Know Why the Courage Bird Sings. 
This selection is considered one of the most influential books of modern time. Angela's remarkable career encompassed dance, theater, journalism, and activism. She traveled throughout Europe for her role in Porgy and Bess and appeared in Broadway and off-Broadway plays, including Cabaret for Freedom. She served as a Northern Coordinator for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, which was established by Martin Luther King Jr. and uh, other civil rights activists to assist local organizations working towards the goal of equality for African Americans. At the request of Malcolm X, she returned to the United States from Africa to assist him with his civil rights causes. In 1992, Angelo uh, read on the Pulse of Mourning at the inauguration of President Clinton, which marked the first time an African-American woman wrote and presented a poem at a presidential inauguration. In 2010, President Obama awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom. She was also the 2013 recipient of the Literary and Award and Honorary National Book Award for contributions to the literary community. Even in her final chapter of life, Angelo was directing, writing, mentoring, and even campaigning for politicians like Hillary Clinton. From humble beginnings to worldwide acclaim, my Angelo showed us so that we are all capable of being phenomenal women, men, and others. In the wake of tragedy and childhood trauma, we can emerge triumphant. Thank you.